Cindy Crawford. Today on House of Style, we're going to explore beauty. What is it? Who has it? I'm beautiful. Can you be beautiful? Probably not, but it won't hurt to watch. <laughs> right now, I'm getting a special facial, something I go through every day. Greta, can you explain what you're doing? Yeah. It's just an Australian Aboriginal beauty secret. You smear the honey on the face like so. Then, you pour on the jar of live Australian ants. <laughs> they eat the top layer of the skin, leaving a fresh, radiant complexion. Ow, 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 ow. It really hurts. <laughs> but, you know, it's worth it. I mean, if you don't think so, who's on the cover of Vogue, me or you? Ow, 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 ow. Get him off! Get him off! following is a paid advertising program. This station does not recommend violent crime as a means of achieving financial success or celebrity status. Hi, I'm Marty Wallerstein. We all know that crime doesn't pay, right? Wrong. Remember those bothersome set of sand laws? Well, that's all over now. You can profit from your violent crime if you let the Creative Crime Clinic show you how. Hey, you just want to snuff somebody? Well, you go right ahead. You want a big movie deal? You come to us. Let's visit the clinic, shall we? Come on. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is very neat work. Too neat. You want them to think you're a mouth-breathing psycho, okay? Now, take a look at this ransom note. This is guaranteed to get you a five-minute piece on hard copy. Your neighbors were delicious. <laughs> oh, and paper clipping the victim's ear to the note is that little extra that adds so much. Hey, it's that kind of attention to detail that makes the difference between doing hard time and doing big numbers at the box office. Marty, we're ready for the pitch meeting. Okay, the pitch. Now, tell us all about your crime and knock our socks off. Okay, well... I was planning to kill my wife. Boring. Well, oh, and uh, my mother-in-law. Yeah. Uh, well, some guy just happens to be passing by. Hey, that is. And uh, and all the farm animals. Oh. Yes, How are you gonna do it? Well. I thought I'd suffocate my wife with a pillow. Uh oh, no, no, art department, let's put some life into that. Well, Raul and I were thinking chainsaw, but then Dave came up with a great idea. Farm machinery. Oh. We're talking real carnage here, hey. huh? Hey, you know, proper planning makes all the difference. And finally, we get to the most critical part of the training, negotiating the movie deal. No, no. Don't bully me, Jerry. Either De Niro plays me, or I take my crime to another studio. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Come on, let my creative crime clinic turn your boring humdrum crime into the talk of the town and the top of the charts. And remember, I am not a lawyer. I'm an agent. I'm not here to get you off. I'm here to get you millions. And if that don't get you off, what will? <laughs> don't forget, crime pays! <laughs> Speaking of gorgeous faces, here's one known to millions. My friend, superstar model, Claudia Schiffer. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> Hello, Cindy. Claudia, you're beautiful. Is there anything you change about yourself? Hmm. No. <laughs> Me neither. Except I've always wanted a tiny little tattoo to show that even though I'm German, I can be crazy and fun-loving. Tattoos are very hot right now. Claudia, I have a surprise for you. I'm going to give you the tattoo you've always wanted. You have done tattoos before. No, but I draw really well, and I thought, how hard can it be? <laughs> how about this cute little daisy design? Oh, it's pretty. Well, you have your own show, so I trust you. <laughs> While I get started on Claudia's tattoo, let's meet Manhattan's hottest hat man, Rasputin O'Malley, and hear his fascinating but offbeat philosophy 
of hats. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> You're not alive unless you're wearing a hat. Without a hat, you're naked. You're just a horrible, dead thing. Here are several hats from my new collection. I took grapes and smashed them like this into a sun hat to make a red wine stain. This hat says, I'm drunk, I'm available. I don't care who I go home with. Now, this hat makes a very different statement. It says, I'm wild and dangerous and possibly psychotic. And if you try to touch me, I'll stab you! This hat, my favorite, says, Love me, I'm a little baby. How do my bottom and hold me till I fall asleep? With each of these, you get a statement that only a hat can make. So remember, without a hat, you are nothing! <laughs> What James Bond is doing right this minute. Ah, 007, you're here. Late as usual. The lights were against me. <laughs> yes, well, as you know, the Cold War is over, but we are still on Her Majesty's payroll, and there is still work to be done. Ah, another mission. Good. Come over here, 007. I want you to take a look at this device. Very ingenious. Machine guns up front, no doubt. No, no, nothing like that. These blades spin around, and it becomes a helicopter. No. Poison gas. No. Radio. No! How does it work, then? You simply pull this cord here several times until it starts up. You'll feel it kick in. Then you cut grass with it. Exactly what sort of mission is this anyway? Take a look out this window, 007. Tell me, what do you see? Well, I see the park, mm -hmm. trees, bushes, acres of lawn. Ah, yes, the lawn. Get on the shaggy side, don't you think, 007? I suppose it is. Yes, we want you to get out there and tidy the place up a bit, won't you? You want me to mow the front lawn? You have a license to prune now, 007. Use it! <laughs> so, in the 007, try to bring it back in one piece, hmm? Of course. <laughs> Yeah, almost. It feels big what you're doing. Well, it's a little bit bigger than my drawing, but, you know, skin's a lot harder to work on than paper. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what happened? Well, uh, nothing. But, Claudia, instead of a daisy, how about a really long sunflower? <laughs> what are you doing? Let me see it in the mirror. <laughs> oh, my God! You dumb ghost! You have ruined my back! You have ruined my career! No, no, it makes you really unique, you know? Like my mole? It's pretty. <laughs> Look what's unique. I'll show you your no. unique. No, Claudia, no! No, you're insane! No, no! Woody and Mia react to the last sketch. Do you think she's funny? No, you mean a funny one? You do. You think she's funny. No. What? Should I be funnier? Should I be funnier in bed? Is that what no, you're saying? No, you couldn't possibly be funnier in bed. Really? <laughs> Gee, I don't... Who is that? Who? It's Juliet Lewis. Well, how did she get in here? I don't know. Maybe the maid let her in. She thought she was one of the kids. You know, every time I come over here, I feel like I'm getting on the little boat on the It's a Small World ride. You know, children of all races and creeds. Really? Well, I was having Vietnamese quintuplets delivered today. What? Really? What time? This is crazy. You know, some people collect hummels and you collect kids. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of kids running around. Yeah. But it's 
like a very weird energy. <laughs> well, what is she doing? Why, why is she sucking on your finger? It's Juliet Lewis. That's what she does. <laughs> should I suck on your finger? Well, I mean, you know, we're consenting adults, so naturally. Yeah, should I? Yes, of course you should. <laughs> She's better. You know, maybe we could do a timeshare. You know, you, you could have me on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And, yeah. You know, just Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And then I'll sleep late on Sunday. I mean, it's Sunday. Sunday. No. What a barber at Chernobyl is doing right this minute. the most popular girl in school is doing right this minute. Mm. What a woman with a mustache is doing right this minute. Oh, it won't come out. Oh, my son. No commercials. My cosmetic endorsements. I'm going to have to get a real job. And now it's time for Love Not Meant to Be Theater. Tonight's episode, The Tree Surgeon. He came one hot summer day to breathe new life into my old sycamore tree. To make it stand strong and firm again. As I watched him, I knew he was the one I've waited so long for. So very long. Destiny had brought us together, never to part. We would love each other, body and soul, as no two people had ever loved before. Clinging to each other, giving and taking, getting sand in our bathing suits, not caring, laughing at the rash we knew it would give us. The moment of truth had come. I could contain my passion no longer. I screwed my courage to a sticking post and decided to boldly offer him my popsicle, a fitting symbol of my frozen desire about to melt in his hot, tender mouth. As he pulled his lean, taut body up the tree, his muscles rippled like, well, like muscles. So cruel. Ow! This was a love not meant to be. Hey, 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 I must put my passion and my popsicle back in the freezer compartment of my heart until tomorrow when the plumber comes. After all, tomorrow is what are you thinking day. about? We have the widest selection of obsolete but fully operational artificial hearts and pacemakers available anywhere. You say you can't afford a deluxe top of the line Jarvik 7 artificial heart? Well, how about an earlier model? Like this Jarvik 3 powered by gasoline. And for a little extra pep, just flip the nitrous oxide over burner. Boom! 255 horses of nitro burning funny heart. Or how about this 1983 nuclear powered pacemaker powered by real plutonium vision? How's your running clip? Fine. <laughs> Get yours quick before the regulatory legislation passes in the Senate. But we also got great savings on these more environmentally sound models, like this vintage 1932 dung burning pacemaker, only 1995. You too could be a fecal fireball and a doo doo daddy. We also got this more fitness orientated model. Simon has had his for four weeks now. How's it handling? Hit the. It hurts. It hurts, of course it hurts. No pain, no gain. And remember, folks, no matter what heart you choose, we'll install it for you right here on the premises. So remember, folks, if you've got shortness of breath, shooting chest pains, or pulmonary thrombosis, come on down right here to Tex Worley's Heart Park, where I guarantee you'll find the heart of your dreams. Or, uh, uh, oh, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, God, give me a heart. Ah, and you go for a second, folks, didn't I? Okay, roll that jingle pile of the bouncing heart. You can have a change of heart when you shop at Tex. to the Spalding Exit Longwood, right next to Saul's Discount Sperm Barn. <laughs> and now it's time for 
are the adventures of Andy the Exterminator. Well, I don't know what it is. The smell comes and goes, especially after a rain. <laughs> what could it be? Well, it could be a rat or a cat crawled under there and died. Bird, maybe. Why would a bird crawl under the house? Well, maybe it was confused or depressed. Depressed? Oh, yeah. Let's say you're a mama bird just sitting there on your eggs. You get bored and listless. Your little bird brain just snaps. Next thing you know, you're out of the nest, you're under the house. I had no idea. Oh, well, you're not a professional. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's uh, shed a little light on the subject and see what we see. What do you see? Are you doing any rewiring down here? Not that I know of. <clears throat> Toolbox here. Uh, I see it now. It's bigger than a bird. Yeah. It's got mold all over it. I don't know. <laughs> See if I can reach it. <laughs> oh, it's just a human hand. Wait a minute. I recognize that watch. That was my husband Daryl's watch. I thought he just walked out on me three years ago. Nope. Looks like he was putting in cable and cut the wrong wire. But I remarried, and I never told my new husband about Daryl. Huh? So if I just pay your bill, maybe we can keep this whole thing quiet. I don't know. We ought to call the police. What will it take for you to forget about all this? Well, an extra five dollars, or uh, look under that house trash. I'll go get my purse. Suit yourself. Men are all alike. <laughs> they still take it. Well, I could use a good rest watch. But these tools are worth more than $5. I love you. I love you. last night. Oh, yeah, how'd it go? Well, it sucked. <laughs> I pick up Gary, you know, to take him to the restaurant, my treat, and then he orders a steak and the waiter brings him chicken and he won't take it back. He goes, hey, that's what you ordered. So I grab the waiter, I him, I get him in a headlock, I grab him by the hair and I throw him against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it went great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, you know. But then when I suggest to Gary that we go back to my place to fool around, he gets all nervous, grabs a cab, and runs home. Bummer, what's his problem? I don't know. Why can't I get a boyfriend? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? <laughs> Nothing. You look great. You delts, your lats. Look at your abs. You're more ripped than ever. You could wash clothes on that stomach. I do. <laughs> hey, I got the same problem, you know. I can't get a guy, and I am a babe. Look at me. We're both babes. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, sorry I'm late. On the phone with my wife. She's pregnant again. <laughs> All right, you awesome Amazons. This is the last time I'm letting out your costumes. You gotta lay off those steroids. Hi, Hi Justin. Justin. What's wrong? Don't tell me there's trouble in Wampin' Big Woman World. We can't get boyfriends. Tell us what we're doing wrong. You're a man. Me? <laughs> well, uh, you could try acting a little more feminine. You saying we feminine? No, no, I'm just saying, look at the way she's sitting. That's not pretty. Well, how am I supposed to sit? <sighs> like this. Knees together, hands on thighs, sit, cross, point the ankle. Not like that. Ow, 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 they don't even go together anymore. Why don't you have muscle 
things I don't even want to think about. You have buffed yourself into no man's land. Oh, what are we going to do? Justin, can you help us? Yeah, can you? Well, if it's not too late. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. I want you to think feminine, think dainty, think Victoria Principle. Walk this way. You gotta shake your hip from side to side and put a little wiggle in your can. You gotta bounce and jiggle, wash and giggle if you're ever gonna land a man. You gotta act demure, cause gentlemen prefer a girl that they're butcher than. If you spit and scratch your ass, they won't ever make a pass and you'll never catch a man. Girl stuff on your date tonight? Nah, I'm gonna cancel. I got jock itch. Oh, oh, I can't feel my toes. <laughs> Tuesday on Class of 96. What do you do when the professor you respect and admire most is accused of the unthinkable? Check out an all new Class of 96, followed by an all new Key West Tuesday. For the gang at West Beverly, their senior year has been one they'll never forget. And with graduation just a few months away, the biggest surprises are yet to come. Catch 90210 Senior Year, followed by Melrose Place, Wednesday.